Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be Judges chapter 4. And verse 1, what did I tell you? And the children of Israel again did evil, did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Harosheph of the Gentiles. And that word Gentiles just means nation. So sometimes it just means in nations of Israel. And when it's talking about the captain of the host, it's talking about the captain of the army. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, ah, Deborah, a prophetess, a female prophet. There's at least two that I know of in the Bible. Another was Anna. She was in the New Testament. She served the Lord with fasting and prayer in the temple. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoff, she judged Israel at that time. So not only was Deborah a female prophet, she was also the, uh, the, the judge, the ruler. So I actually did a um, Bible study on this. I can say that a lot. 1,500 plus Bible study, so yeah. And... Um, you know, was there not a man whose heart was as pure as Deborah's? Evidently not. So, and she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, not, not Obama, the son of Abinoam out of Kedeshif Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zebulun? Now, if you don't know it, Zaphtali, Naphtali and Zebulun are two of the twelve tribes. And I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and with his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. So here's the judge and the prophetess telling the uh, captain of the Lord's army to go and engage the captain of the enemy army. And said, you'll deliver the enemy into thine hand. Verse 8. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. Oh, little lady, I need you to hold my hand when we go into battle. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. You see, Barak, you're not going to get the honor for this battle. The enemy's captain is going to die by the hand of a woman. So what's going to happen? Is Deborah going to be the one that takes Sisera's head? Let's wait and see. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kiddush. And Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kiddush, and he went up with 10,000 men at his feet, and Deborah went up with him. Now Eber, the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, had served himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent unto the plain of Zanam, which is by Kiddush. And they showed Sisera that Barak, the son of 
Abinoam was gone up to Mount Tabor. And Sisera, you know, the enemy general, gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him from Harosheth of the Gentiles unto the river Kishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. And the Lord discomforted Sisera. Now remember, Sisera is the enemy general. The Lord discomforted Sisera and all his chariots and all his host with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. So things went badly. And uh, Sisera says, uh, the heck with this, I'm out of here. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the hosts unto Harosheth of the Gentiles, and all the hosts of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left. That's what you call uh, down to the last man. There was nobody left. The Lord let them all die at the edge of the sword. Howbeit Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazor, and the house of Heber, the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, so here it is, this woman, you know, goes out to meet him. And she says, turn in, my Lord, turn in to me, fear not. And when he had turned in unto her, into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. Well, it's, you know, like a piece of clothing, right, to keep him warm. And he said unto her, give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him. Again, he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man doth come and inquire of thee, and say, Is there any man there, here? Is there any man here? Is there anybody here? That thou shalt say, No, nobody's home. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him, and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground. For he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. That must have been one long nail. It went through his temple, through the other temple, into the ground. And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said unto him, Come, and I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. Come here, and let me show you something. And when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So God subdued on that day Jabin, Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. An alternate thing could be, and God's uh, people did evil in his sight, and he sold them into the hands of the uh, New World uh, Order. Yeah. And into the hands of those that hate the Lord. And they cried out unto the Lord. Lord, they're making us take uh, medical treatments. Yeah. You know, King Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. The key to the future is usually the past in the Bible. Has anything changed? No. The enemies of God are persecuting God's people. So, yeah. Yeah, not much has changed, has it? Absolutely not. 
All right. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.